Okay. Hello, Mayor and City Council members. I'm Teresa Malloy, the Budget Manager, and this is the pre-recorded presentation for the 2014 to 2018 Capital Improvement Program that is scheduled for September 17th Council meeting. As part of the budget process each year, staff also updates our five-year CIP. You received a copy of our proposed 2014 to 18 CIP along with our proposed budget. The CIP is a planning document that shows the city's infrastructure needs over the next five years. The city's financial policy policies require that the city review, create, and implement a five-year capital improvement program. The Longmont Area Comprehensive Plan, or LACP, establishes a three-tiered planning system which incorporates a CIP process to plan capital improvements. More information on this process can be found under the overview section of your CIP document. Infrastructure needs are presented in the form of projects that are then categorized based on types of projects. Projects can be funded from either one funding source or several funding sources, depending on the project and what sources are allowable. As there is never enough money available to meet all the needs, what you will see in the document under each category of projects are the projects that are fully funded, meaning there is sufficient funding for this project over the five-year period, partially funded, meaning there is only sufficient funding to fund a portion of this project over the five-year period, and funded, meaning there's not, there is not sufficient funding to fund any of this project over the five-year period. The first year of the CIP is then included in our proposed budget. Staff has selected several projects in which to update you on. You will hear an update on what is currently happening with the project, if there is funding appropriated in 2013, followed by what is planned over the next five-year period. We have a variety of staff who will be presenting to you today. For projects funded from the Public Improvement Fund, this year, we utilized a prioritization process that was used many years ago. The scoring is based on 14 criteria that look at project use, is it year-round versus seasonal, benefit and use to citizens, the impact of the project on the current level of service being provided, does the project ex extend the current level of service, does relations, what is the relationship to safety, health, or um, standards? What's the impact of addressing the mission statement and quality of life? Whether it's an urgent repair, it looks at the operating impacts of the project, the fiscal connections to agencies, other outside agencies, or any other internal projects. It also takes into consideration outside funding sources. It looks at if it's an efficiency improve, improvement project. It looks at whether it supports redevelopment and, the, and if the project is, is identified in any current master plan. And finally, the scoring criteria um, really looks at whether the project is urgent, maintenance, or is an improvement. Since most of the scoring methodology is many years old, we plan to update our methodology, review and update it, prior to our CIP process next year. And then we'll begin utilizing this um, scoring methodology for all CIP projects in the future. This slide shows the projects by category that are included in your proposed 2014 budget. The largest category of projects is transportation, followed by public buildings you will hear about some of the more significant projects with, that fall within these categories. This slide shows you the projects that are proposed to be funded over the full five years from 2014 through 2018. Water projects make up the largest category over the five-year period due to the Windy Gap Firming Project, which is currently planned for construction in 2016. Transportation is the next largest category, followed by public buildings and then wastewater projects. Both this slide and the previous slide are in your proposed document with additional information if you'd like to, to view it there. 
This slide shows you the amount of proposed to be funded by year. You will notice that in 2017, funding significantly drops off. This is due to the Windy Gap project where construction costs are in 2016. The street fund sales tax is set to expire at the end of 2016, so no transportation projects are funded beyond 2016. The city will need to take this back out to the voters and staff is um, proposing that, that this be done in 2014, although um, conversation will be um, brought to council regarding this in the future. So our next present presenter is Nick Wolfram. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nick Wolfram. I'm the Engineering Services Manager with the City of Longmont. Projects included in the CIP generally focus on improvements to and rehabilitation and renewal of the existing infrastructure that serves the community. The overall guiding document, as Teresa said, we use for identifying improvements to the majority of the city infrastructure is the Longmont Area Comprehensive Plan, which guides master plans that are developed for various utilities and services that the city provides. Those master plans then identify the projects that are eventually placed into the capital improvement program. As we look at management of these city assets, we also focus on system rehabilitation uh, projects that maintain and renew the infrastructure for the most optimum life cycle cost possible. Over the past few years, with, relative, with a stagnant economy, we have seen little or no increase in the cost of construction. But as this, year, and this year, as the economy has improved, we've seen increases in the co construction costs in the range of about 10% over previous years. One of the master plan updates we're working on is the transportation model for the street master plan. The 2013 operating budget included funding to update the city's transportation model. This is a tool we use to master plan improvements necessary to meet the future traffic demands of the city. We anticipate completion of this model in early 2014 and we'll be using that information and master planning in future CIPs. So as we look at several projects, we'll start with project D28, the Spring Gulch No. 2 drainage and greenway improvement project, which is on page 23 of the 2014 CIP. This project addresses drainage, transportation and recreational issues for the community and with the, uh, will extend the uh, existing Spring Gulch No. 2 Greenway from the current end of it at Stephen Day Park south and east to Sandstone Ranch. The project is broken into two phases at this point. Phase 1 is currently out to bid and construction should begin this fall. Phase 1 will include construction of a new 8-foot wide trail along the north side of uh, State Highway 119 from 3rd Avenue out to Spring Gulch No. 2. Also included will be the construction of a box culvert or pedestrian underpass under State Highway 119 that will improve drainage and will also create a grade separated bicycle and pedestrian connection uh, under State Highway 119 to Sandstone Ranch. Phase two is currently under design and is scheduled for construction in 2014. It will include extending the existing off street trail from Stephen Day Park out to Union Reservoir and then south to Sandstone Ranch with a connection to the St. Brand Greenway. Project PB192, the Operation and Maintenance Building, is on page 85 of the CIP. This is the facility located out on Airport Road, which was originally constructed in 1995 uh, this facility then housed crews and equipment for the responsible, responsible for the street and storm drainage utilities, as well as the solid waste collection. In the past two years, we've consolidated crews at this facility to also include those responsible for water distribution and sanitary sewer collection systems to improve efficiency with shared crews and equipment. The project will include expansion of facilities to address that increased demand on the site. Uh, working with the local consulting firm of uh, Moore and Bishton Architects, we've completed a site master plan update and design of the first phase of construction is underway. Phase one is scheduled to begin in early 2014 and will include revisions to the existing drainage facilities and construction of additional covered vehicle storage and other site improvements. 
Future phases identified in the 2014 CIP will include drying areas for ditch cleaning and street sweeping spoils and improved material storage. Project DR8, the downtown alley improvements, is shown on page 19 of the 2014 CIP. The first phase of this project, which included the alleys and breezeways on the east side of Main Street, is complete. With the completion, we've seen improved drainage and replacement of deteriorated alley pavement, along with undergrounding of overhead utilities. With the creation of improved pedestrian access and space, the LDDA has utilized this area for new opportunities in downtown, and many of the businesses have moved forward with improvements to the rear of their building adjacent to these new improvements. The design of Phase 2, the alleys and breezeways on the west side of the 300, 400, and 500 blocks of Maine is currently being completed and has included many public meetings with businesses along that side of Maine. The current schedule is to go out to bid for Phase 2 in January with construction scheduled to begin in March 2014. As I previously mentioned, we've seen increases in construction costs and we'll have to see how this project is impacted by uh, any potential increases in cost. As we did with Phase 1 on the east side, the current plan is to move forward with a phased approach with a block-by-block -block, uh, construction to confine construction and minimize impacts to the public and businesses in downtown. Project MUS-149 is the Wastewater Treatment Master Plan Improvements. It's on page 134 of your proposed 2014 CIP. Funded by approximately $19.6 million in bond funding approved by voters in 2009, this project is replacing aging and deteriorating infrastructure necessary to maintain the operation of the city's wastewater treatment plant. Construction is currently underway and is scheduled for completion in the summer of 2014. The primary uh, pieces of this project include replacement of the Headworks facility, primary clarifier uh, improvements, roof replacements, aeration basin modifications, and other various system rehabilitation and upgrades. Projects that probably have the most impact on the public and are most visible are those that are in the street right-of-way. And with 326 miles of paved streets, 35 major bridge structures, 443 miles of uh, water mains, 328 miles of sanitary sewers in the right-of-way, there are significant projects. In addition, the city has over 32 public buildings that are being maintained. This map shows the um, streets that are being impacted by t in 2013 by street rehabilitation work, water line rehabilitation, and sanitary sewer rehabilitation work. As you can see, the work is spread throughout the community. Project MUS-53, the Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation and Improvements, uh, is shown on uh, page 133 of the proposed 2014 CIP. This work is scheduled to begin in late September and continue into December. Some of the streets where this work will be done this year include Hover from 14th to 17th, Bowen Street from 3rd to Long's Peak, Long's Peak uh, from Bowen to Grand, and 15th Avenue from uh, Long's Peak to 6th. The work in the program in 2013 is primarily being done by installing a new lining in the existing sewer lines. Rather than having to excavate and replace the sewer line, this technology allows the work to be done by installing the new lining through an existing manhole, minimizing the impact to the public, and helping to reduce costs. Project MUW-66 Water Distribution Rehabilitation and Improvements is on page 66 of the pro proposed CIP. And this is another asset management type program. Uh, the project is rehabilitating existing aging infrastructure and making necessary improvements to maintain the level of service in our water distribution system. Design is currently underway uh, and are, is currently being completed on the 2013 program and construction is scheduled to begin in October of this year. We anticipate that it will continue into 2014 depending on winter weather. Some of the work in the 2013 program includes replacement of water mains in First Avenue between Sherman and Bowen Street, Francis Street between Carolina and Ninth Avenue, 
Bowen Street between 1st and 2nd, and also between 8th and 9th Avenues, and Holiday Drive between Collier and Atwood Street. Tom Street is going to continue on with some descriptions of some of our transportation projects. Hi, my name is Tom Street, and I'm an engineering administrator with the Public Works and Natural Resources Department, and I'm here to talk about several of our transportation-related CIP projects. T1, or our Street Rehabilitation Program, is a major component of the city's pavement management plan. This is a citywide program that includes a variety of repair, preventative maintenance, rehabilitation, and reconstruction projects for an entire street system. 2013 projects include crack sealing, chip sealing, concrete repair, pavement rehabilitation, and overlay projects. A particular note is our 2013 chip seal projects, where about 105,000 square yards of chip seal was placed at various locations throughout the city, including many residential street locations. We believe chip sealing is very cost effective, prevented a maintenance treatment that over the long term will improve the overall pavement condition of our transportation system. We really feel chip sealing is a very important pavement management tool, and we are projecting an increased need for this tool over the next few years. T111, or the Main Street Reconstruction Project, includes the design and construction of all improvements needed to reconstruct the deteriorated asphalt pavement on Main Street from Ken Pratt Boulevard to 3rd Avenue. Currently, a contract has been awarded to Muller Engineering Company for all design services necessary to construct this project. The design effort has started and is scheduled to be completed during the fall of 2014. Public outreach, which will include a series of public information meetings, is slated to start early in 2014. Construction is anticipated to start during late winter or early spring of 2015. This project includes federal funding of just under $1.9 million. This slide shows the project limits, which will be on Main Street from just north of Ken Pratt Boulevard and will extend up to just south of 3rd Avenue. T113, or the Main Street and St. Brain River Bridge project, includes all design and construction efforts needed to remove and replace the existing bridge over the St. Brain River. This aging bridge is functionally obsolete, does not pass the 100-year storm event, and does not have adequate bike or pedestrian facilities. Design work is scheduled to start during early October and is expected to be completed by early fall of 2014. This project is currently being shown as partially funded for construction in the proposed 2014 to 2018 CIP. And currently, the city is in the final stages of approval for a $3 million FEMA grant that would provide a funding source sufficient to construct this project. Construction of this project is tentatively scheduled to start late in 2014. This project will also require extensive coordination with the Main Street Reconstruction Project, along with the Dickens Farm Park Project. This slide here shows the location of the project, which will be at the intersection of the St. Brain River and Main Street. T76 includes all design and construction efforts needed to remove and replace the South Pratt Parkway Bridge at the St. Brain River. The current bridge was constructed in 1970 and is functionally obsolete. It also does not pass the 100-year storm event, does not have adequate bike or pedestrian facilities, and has ongoing maintenance concerns. Design work is scheduled to start during early October of 2013 Right-of-way acquisition is scheduled to start during the fall of 2014, and this project is funded for construction in 2016. This slide shows the project location, which was at the intersection of South Pratt Parkway and the St. Brain River, just south of Boston Street. T78, or the Hover Street Pedestrian Underpass Project, includes the construction of a grade-separated pedestrian crossing of Hover Street at Dry Creek. Design work is expected to start during late September, and construction is currently targeted to start in July of 2014. This project also has federal funding and 
with just over 1.6 million being secured for this project. This project provides improved multimodal transportation opportunities through the construction of a grade separator pedestrian crossing, as well as providing additional drainage capacity for Dry Creek at Hover Street. This project will improve pedestrian and bike access between the mall redevelopment project and the commercial businesses along the west side of Hover Street, along with providing a safe pedestrian and bicycle link to the Dry Creek Greenway Trail west of Hover Street. T91, or the Diagonal Underpass Project, includes the design and construction of a grade separated pedestrian crossing of State Highway 119, just southwest of the busy Hover Street intersection. Project design work is about 40% complete and is expected to be completed during the spring of 2014. Construction is currently targeted for the summer of 2014. This is a joint project between the city and Boulder County and includes funding of $463,000 from Boulder County, along with federal funding of $965,000. This project will improve the connection of residential neighborhoods to commercial opportunities on each side of the Diagonal Highway and Hover Street, along with an improved connection to the Lobo Trail. Lastly, I'd like to mention that staff will be available at the September 17th Council meeting if there are additional questions. Thank you. Hi, I'm Paula Fitzgerald, Parks and Open Space Project Manager for the City of Longmont in the Public Works and Natural Resources Department. I'll provide a brief update of two of our ongoing projects, PR5B, which is the St. Ring Greenway Project, and PR150, which is the Quail Campus Master Plan Improvements. The St. Frank Greenway project includes three separate phases of work, which are all ongoing. Phase 11, which is Dickens Farm Park. Phase 12, which is a tra trail project from Golden Ponds to Pella Crossing. And Phase 13, also a trail project from Sandstone Ranch to St. Vrain State Park. These projects were prioritized initially as part of the Parks, Recreation, and Trails Master Plan, where PR5B and PR150 were both identified as one to five year priority projects. They were again looked at as part of the 2014 through 18 CIP. I'll begin with uh, PR5B, shown on page 41 of the 2014 CIP. Phase 11 of the project is Dickens Farm Park. Uh, a master plan for this 52 acre parcel of land in central Longmont was approved by council at your July 9th meeting this year after an extensive public process. Design work continues at this time, including continued work with key stakeholders and neighbors. The project has an estimated bid date of spring 2014. Construction would then be expected to begin next summer with, uh, with work continuing over the fall and winter months. Design and partial construction funds were appropriated in the 2013 CIP with additional funds for the park construction requ requested in the 2014 CIP. Conservation Trust and street funds will be used for the project with the street funds allocated for the portion of Boston Avenue needed to access the site. The remainder of Boston Avenue is shown in the CIP with construction funding in 2016 as part of T92 Boston Avenue price to Martin. Operations and maintenance costs have been accounted for and were included in the funding options that staff presented to council at their September 3rd meeting. This slide shows the approved master plan for the site, which includes many park amenities along the St. Ring in the lower downtown air area of central Longmont. A river park for floaters and boaters is included in the plan along with a nature discovery trail for kids a bike skills area for novice cyclists, and a small programming area. The next two phases of the St. Rain project are both trail extensions. This map shows the existing eight mile trail in brown running through Longmont with the various parks along its route. Phase 12 shown in green extends the project to our western boundary at Airport Road. We're working with Boulder County on its extension from that point to Pella Crossing in the town of Hygiene. On the east end, also shown in green, is phase 13, which will extend the trail to St. Rain State Park. 
On the Phase 12 project, which is again the trail from Golden Ponds to Pella Crossing, we continue to work on land negotiations needed for the trail corridor. Once complete, our partner Boulder County will continue taking the lead on design with shared work from both Longmont and Boulder County planned during the construction phase. Funds have already been appropriated this year for the St. Rain project using Conservation Trust and street funds. The street fund portion was appropriated as part of T-105, the Missing Sidewalks project. A state trails grant has also been awarded and will be earmarked for the trail portion of the construction project. This is a map showing the Phase 12 westward extension of the trail from Golden Ponds to Airport Road and along Airport Road north towards Westview Middle School. The red dashed line shows Longmont's portion of the project, with the blue dashed line showing Boulder County's portion. Boulder County will extend the trail west from Airport Road to Pella Crossing. The Phase 12 project will add about two miles to the St. Ring Greenway Trail and will complete Longmont's work to our western boundary. Boulder County does plan to continue expanding the trail westward to the town of Lyons over the next several years. Phase 13 is a trail extension from Sandstone Ranch to the east end of Longmont's planning area at St. Rain State Park. We are also still currently working with land negotiations on this phase of the trail corridor. Once complete, design is scheduled to begin. Coordination on this eastward expansion is being done with St. Rain State Parks, Weld County, and the town of Firestone. All of these entities have trail plans conceptually designed to continue the trail from our project and at Highway 119. Funds for Phase 13 also come from the Conservation Trust Fund with design monies previously approved in the 2013 CIP. Construction funds are requested in the 2015 CIP. This phase will complete the St. Ring Greenway through Longmont and connect us with the adjacent jurisdictions. We expect to be complete with construction of the St. Rain Trail in 2016. This map shows the Phase 13 project with Sandstone Ranch on the left and our open space project known as Boulder Creek Estates on the right. St. Rain State Park is across the highway north along the creek. The St. Rain Trail is also part of the Front Range Trail Plan, which is a statewide trail plan. When we complete Phase 13 of the project, we'll we will have contributed um, a significant amount to not only realizing Longmont's vision, but also the state's vision for a major regional trail. I would now like to turn to PR 150, which is shown on page 45 of the 2014 CIP. This is the Quail Campus Master Planned Improvements Project. Project design works in work includes an update to the 2008 master plan for the Quail Campus site which is the current home for our recreation center and museum and cultural center. The master plan update was completed in April this year with design now continuing towards full construction documents. We hope to go to bid in the spring of next year with construction estimated to be underway in the spring and fall of 2014. Park improvement funds are being used for this project with portions appropriated in the 2013 budget and the remainder requested in the 2014 CIP. This project is also suitable for a USTA grant, which will be requested this fall or winter. Operations and maintenance costs have been accounted for on this project as well, and are also included, were also included in the funding options that staff presented, presented to council at their September 3rd meeting. This is a uh, picture of the Quail Campus Master Plan update with the phase one project area shown in the red dashed line. The current phase of the pro project includes design of a 10 court tennis complex shown here just north of the recreation center, along with parking and an improved access drive east of the recreation center. The courts will provide a central tournament location for Longmont with easy access from state highways. The parking will serve both the new court complex as well as overflow needs for the recreation center. Hello, Mayor and Council. I'm Jeff Cedar, the Facility Maintenance Supervisor. 
I'm here to go give you an update on PB82, the municipal building's HVAC replacement, and an overview on general building conditions. PB82 is an annual project shown on page 72 of the CIP book uh, that replaces heating and air conditioning units on city buildings based on the expected life cycle. 2013 work included replacement of one unit at the library and four units at the Twin Peaks Golf Course. The library project was completed in July of this year and the Twin Peaks Golf Course will be completed later this fall. The scope for 2014 HVAC replacements include uh, three additional units at the library, two units at the utility center, and a repair to undercoat the two pool heat recovery units at the recreation center. Although core building component replacements like roofing, HVAC, and boiler equipment, uh, flooring, uh, security hardware are based on their life, uh, expected life, the buildings themselves currently have an indefinite life cycle where life expectancy is not a consideration. Thus, the five-year capital program, relying heavily on the uh, public improvement funds, continues to have more work identified that can be funded in a timely manner. Therefore, the work continues to be phased out over several years, uh, many times beyond the equipment's useful life, uh, as often as, um, and often it's up to five years beyond that, which is then compounded by the aging building factors. During the 2014-2018 CIP program, Renewal of the core building infrastructure at Quail has been identified since the equipment will reach its expected life soon and the building will be almost 20 years old. As, I, as my work continues to be proactively planning for replacements of these core building components, the need to consider the aging building as a whole is going to increase. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jody Hammonds, LPC's Electric Engineering Project Coordinator. LPC has many CIP projects for 2013, totaling approximately $3.5 million. All projects are on target to be at or under budget, with one project, MUE14, coming in significantly under budget. MUE14 electric main feeder extensions extends high-capacity circuits to neighborhoods. The vast majority of the $990,000 budget was for one large industrial customer who had indicated a planned expansion. This is not occurring and the result is estimated spending for this project to be closer to $115,000 for 2013. LPC's 2014 CI budget is approximately $2.1 million. New and redevelopment work within the community is on the uptake so budgets have been set to cover anticipated growth, especially in aid to construction and main feeder extensions. Both of these projects have offsetting revenues that cover costs. You can see that LPC has a portion of the downtown alley improvement project, and there will be carryover dollars from 2013 that will be added to the 2014 budget amount. Substation upgrades will continue to include substation security and improved transformer control and monitoring systems. Electric system reliability improvements deploy devices to help advance our system reliability. The street lighting program works with citizens, community resources, and public works to improve lighting in areas around our community. MUE 100 Electric Vehicle Charging Stations is a new project for 2014 and options for locations and level of stations will be developed prior to final decisions on implementation. The broadband projects are a baseline budget and will be adjusted if the related bond issue passes. Thank you. Hello, Mayor, Mayor and members of Council. My name is Bruce Maysillis. I'm the Fleet Manager for the City. I'm here to present PB7, Fleet Building Expansion. This uh, involves the expansion of our fleet facility at the Service Center, uh, Building Number 2, and the acquisition and renovation of the Water O&M Vehicle Maintenance Storage Building. Uh, we originally looked at expanding our 
existing building, uh, but it was more cost effective for us to purchase uh, the O&M building from water after they vacated the service center campus and renovate this building for both vehicle maintenance and public safety vehicle storage. The project is about $1.5 million for construction costs in 2014. Currently this year we are undergoing the architectural design and renovation for renovation of both buildings. Um, the o and building is approximately 11,900 square feet and the existing fleet building is about 16,000 square feet which will be renovated and updated. Uh, we intend to move repairs for our fire and sanitation fleet to the new O&M building and the rest of the O&M building will be used to store high dollar public safety equipment that is currently being stored outside. Um, part of the improvements to the existing fleet building will be for ADA improvements and to bring the building up to code to work on compressed natural gas vehicles. We are bringing a compressed natural gas fueling station online this year. Uh, we intend to move our service rider location and our parts location in the existing fleet building to a ground level and consolidate those and centralize them in the building to, to realize greater efficiencies. Um, the current building was built in 1972, fleet building was built in 1972. We did a major addition to it in 1995 to add heavy truck bays and in 2000 we added the office space and an additional building which is building 3 our warehouse building. Right now the building's uh, very inconvenient, it's congested, it's inefficient so that's what's driving these improvements as well as the ADA and code issues that we're dealing with. Uh, we will provide the storage in the new building for the public safety and uh, we will be able to move our sanitation and fire operations to that building in order to better service those buildings and uh, realize uh, less congestion and greater efficiencies. I'd like to remind Council that all the staff presentations, the staff will be available at Council meeting tomorrow night for further questions if you have any. Thank you.